Hello everyone. Welcome to the third lesson of the Crow Panel Pico HMI display tutorial. In this session, I'm going to show you how to display images from an SD card on a Crow Panel board. Now, since the 2.4, 2.8, and 3.5 displays use the display driver provided by the TFT ESPI library, while the 4.3 board utilizes the driver from the PicketV library, I'll be demonstrating using the 2.4 and 4.3 boards for this lesson. But keep in mind, most of the operations are essentially the same across different sizes. Let's get started with my demonstration now. In the course materials, locate the code for the third lesson. I'll start by demonstrating with the 2.4 inch board. So let's first open the code for the 2.4 inch display. If you're unsure where to download the course materials, you can find the link in the video description below this video. Clicking on it will redirect you to the download page for the course materials. I've organized all the images used in this lesson into a folder named SD card image within the course materials, segregated by their sizes. Each folder contains five images in BMP format. Afterward, insert your SD card into a card reader and then plug the card reader into a USB port on your computer. Next, open the SD card on your computer and put all the images you want to display in Crow Panel into it. I've already prepared the images and put them into the SD card while preparing for the lesson. Additionally, there's something else you should pay attention to. Right-click on the SD card and select Properties. Here, you can see that my SD card's file system is FAT32. I recommend using the same file system as mine. If your SD card is in a different format, you can right-click on it and choose Format. Here, you can change the format of your SD card to FAT32. However, before you start formatting, make sure to save any important files on the SD card, as this action will erase all files within it. Since I'll be using the 4.3-inch display for demonstration later, I'll first put all the images I want to display into the SD card at this step. Additionally, it's crucial to pay attention to the resolution of the images. Since the resolution of the 2.4-inch display is 32240, before you transfer the images to the SD card, you need to resize images of different sizes to the same resolution to ensure optimal display quality. Now that we've prepared the images, let's dive into how the code achieves this. All right, let's first dive into the header file section. There's a familiar one. TFT ESPI, which is a library providing display and touch driver functions for our board. So, whenever you need display or touch functionality, you'll definitely need this. However, I've already covered how to install and configure it in our second lesson, so I'll skip that part in this session. As for the following libraries, they're all provided by the ERP2040 SDK package we installed in the first lesson, so there's no need for additional installation. But, since I'll be using an SD card, I need to configure the pins related to the SD card in my code to initialize its functions within the setup function later on. The SD card communicates using the SPI protocol. Hence, it utilizes these four pins. The configuration process is similar to how we configured the display and touch pins in the second lesson. I'll need to check the schematic to ensure the pins used match those configured in the code. I've placed the schematic in the file folder of the course materials, which you can easily find. Open the 2.4 inch display circuit diagram, then locate the section related to the SD card. From the diagram, you can see that the CS pin is connected to GPIO 22, which matches the configuration in your code. Moving on, MOSI is connected to GPIO 11, MISO is connected to GPIO 12, and the CLK pin is connected to GPIO 10. All right, everything aligns perfectly. If you encounter an initialization failure prompt when initializing the SD card in your setup function, you first need to check if the pin configurations are correct. When initialization fails, an error message will be printed to the serial port. On the other hand, if initialization is successful, 
the screen will display a full screen yellow color along with the text initialization complete being printed. Next, use the open function to open the root directory of the SD card. The double quotes enclose the path to be opened and a single slash here represents the root directory. After both the display and SD card have been initialized, let's take a look at the loop function. Inside it, the draw function is called to display a specified image on the screen. The first parameter is the path to the image you want to display. In this case, it's an image named 241 BMP, located in the root directory of the SD card. The following two parameters are the coordinates for displaying the image. I've set them both to zero, intending to display the image at the origin of the screen, ensuring it's fully visible. Currently, I've set the origin to the top left corner of the screen. You can find the set rotation function in the code, which you can use to change the position of the origin. Simply adjust the parameters following the set rotation function to do so. Moreover, the one second delay between each image switch should not be omitted to prevent switching too fast. Next, let's look at the drop function. It first utilizes the open function to access the desired image for display. If the image does not exist, it will return an error, so please ensure that the image name and the specified path in the code match precisely. After opening the image, it reads the information of each pixel within the image and then utilizes a for loop to draw the image on the screen row by row. However, since each pixel in a BMP bitmap is represented by 24-bit RGB888 encoded data, while the screen we are using represents each pixel with 16-bit RGB565 encoding, we must first convert the RGB888 encoding to RGB565 encoding before using the push image function to display each pixel onto the screen. After completing the drawing, remember to close the opened image using the close function, or it will consume a lot of memory and eventually lead to memory overflow over time. The following part, on the other hand, is the code for reading image data, which is quite straightforward, and thus I won't elaborate further. That's all for the code analysis. Next, let's upload the code to the board and see the final results. Before that, don't forget to remove the SD card from the card reader and insert it into the Crow panel. Then connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable. After connection, click on Tools. Select the corresponding 2.4-inch board, Raspberry Pi Pico, from the board options. Then, click Tools again and choose the serial port corresponding to your board from the port options. Finally, click Upload. Once uploaded, the board will automatically reset. You'll notice that upon completion of display and SD card initialization, the board will display images from the SD card in the order specified by the code. This is the entire process of displaying images from an SD card on a 2.4 inch board. Next, I'll demonstrate the same process using a 4.3 inch board. The operations are similar to those for the other three sizes, except for the display library used and the SD card pin configuration, which will differ. Now, let me proceed with the demonstration. Find the code for the 4.3 inch display in the course materials and open it. Once opened, let's start by analyzing the header files. These header files are provided by the RP2040 ESDK package. Moving down, you'll see the PicketV library, whose installation process was demonstrated in the second lesson. You'll also find the touch header file, whose configuration was also covered in the second lesson. Therefore, I won't go into detail about these here. If you have any questions, please revisit the second lesson first. Scroll further down to the SD card pin configuration section. This part is similar to the SD card pin configuration for the 2.4-inch display. Both require you to refer to the schematic diagram for proper setup. To do this, locate the 4.3-inch schematic diagram in the course materials, open it, and find the section related to the SD card circuitry. Just like with the 2.4-inch setup, 
carefully confirm if the pins used in the code match those indicated on the circuit diagram. Check the MISO, MOS, ICS, and SCK pins. You'll find that the pins specified in the circuit diagram align with those in the code. It's crucial to ensure pin accuracy. Otherwise, errors will occur during SD card initialization in the setup function. After successful initialization, the 4.3-inch code operates similarly to that of other sizes. It first opens the root directory of the SD card, and then, within the loop function, displays images from the SD card in succession. The only difference lies in the image paths, which are unique for each image, so make sure the paths are correct. Also, since the 4.3-inch display has a resolution of 320x240, resize the images you intend to display to 320x240 pixels before uploading them to the SD card. Failure to do so may result in incomplete display. All right, that's the analysis of the 4.3-inch code. Now, let's upload the code to the board to see the results. Before that, connect the Crow panel to your computer using a USB-C cable. Then, click on Tools, select the correct board from the boards list, which should be Alec Row Crow Panel RP2040 DVI for the 4.3-inch version. Next, click Tools again and select the corresponding serial port for your board from the port list. Finally, click Upload. When uploading your code, you might encounter the same compilation error message as I did, but don't worry. It's often because the Arduino IDE defaults to using other libraries instead of the ones required by your code. All you need to do is open the Arduino IDA's library directory and delete the incorrectly used library. If you're unsure where the library directory is, simply click on File, then Preferences. The path displayed there is the location of your library directory. Copy that path, open any file explorer, paste the path, navigate to the library directory, find the Steve Fatata Fruit Fork library, and delete it. Then, go back to the Arduino IDE and recompile your code. Once the code is uploaded, the board will automatically reset. You'll see the screen fill with green color followed by the message init complete printed on the screen. After that, it will start displaying images stored on the SD card in succession. All right, that's all for this lesson. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.